Hey Liz, I've been reading up on some of the specialist equipment we might need for our upcoming kayaking trip. There's a lot to consider, especially if we end up in some tricky situations. Oh really? I know the basics, but what kind of specialist gear are we talking about? I thought a throw bag, knife, and a couple of carabiners were enough. That's true for most situations. But if we find ourselves dealing with a broached raft or paddling in small groups, we might need more mechanical advantage. For instance, pulleys can be crucial when the forces are just too strong to manage with brute strength alone. Pulleys? That makes sense, especially if we need to pull someone or something out of a tough spot. What else should we consider? Along with the pulleys, we should carry a few extra screwgate carabiners, prusik loops, and lengths of nylon tape. These can help set up more advanced systems for hauling or lowering. If we're dealing with vertical access, like steep-sided gorges, a 150-foot low stretch rope is also a must. Wow. That sounds like a lot of gear. Do we really need all of that? It seems like it could get cumbersome, especially on a kayak. It's definitely something to balance. The idea is to be prepared without being weighed down. Too much gear can become a hazard itself, cluttering the boat and getting in the way when we need to move quickly. True, especially in a rescue situation where every second counts. So, what's the difference between low stretch and dynamic ropes? I've heard both terms, but never really understood when to use which. Good question. Low stretch ropes are designed for situations where the load increases slowly and remains constant, making them ideal for hauling or lowering. They don't stretch much, so you can rely on them for consistent tension. Dynamic ropes, on the other hand, are made to absorb sudden shocks, like when a climber falls. They stretch to absorb the energy, which makes them great for safety backups but not so much for rescue work since you don't want that stretch. I see. So, low stretch ropes are better for rescue because they keep the tension steady, but dynamic ropes are more about safety in climbing situations. Exactly. And since most of our ropes will be used for hauling or lowering, low stretch is the way to go. Plus, dynamic ropes tend to sink, which isn't ideal for water-based rescues. That makes sense. What about the throw lines? How do they fit into all of this? Throw lines are actually low stretch too, but they're made from polypropylene, so they float. That's great for most water rescues, but they aren't as strong as caving or canyoning ropes, and they can melt at lower temperatures. If you ever have to use them in an emergency for something like lowering someone over a drop, it's a good idea to wet the rope first to help with heat resistance. I hadn't thought of that. What about nylon tapes? I've used them for creating anchors, but I'm not sure about the best knots to use with them. Nylon tapes are super versatile, especially for creating anchors. The overhand on a bite is quick and easy, but you have to leave a long tail because it can creep under load. If you've got more time, the tape knot, or water knot, is the stronger choice. Just remember, like low stretch ropes, nylon tapes don't absorb energy well, so they shouldn't be used where a fall could shock load them. Got it. And what's the deal with prusik loops? I know they're useful for climbing, but how do they fit into rescue scenarios? Prusik loops are great because they allow you to attach ropes or slings to a tension rope without using knots. They're small, lightweight, and versatile. You can make them from 3 to 4 foot lengths of 5 mm line, tied with a double fisherman's knot. Just remember, smaller diameter lines grip better but are less strong, while larger ones are stronger but don't grip as well. That's good to know. I've heard there are different types of prusik knots too. Is there one that's best for rescue situations? It depends on the situation. The classic prusik is the most reliable since it won't release unless you slacken the rope. The French Prusik releases easily when not under tension, which can be useful but also risky if it's accidentally released. The Klemheist is kind of in between, it won't release accidentally but is easier to free than the classic Prusik, and it can even be tied with tape slings. I'll have to practice those knots. What about mechanical devices? I've seen some pretty fancy gadgets out there that claim to do the same job as Prusik loops. There are lots of mechanical jamming and camming devices, but they're usually designed for specific ropes and situations. They can be heavier and more expensive, so unless you're dealing with a specific need, prusik loops are often the better choice for recreational paddlers like us. That makes sense. It's good to have a lightweight, versatile setup. What about pulleys? I know they can reduce the effort needed, but I've never actually used one. Pulleys are great for reducing friction in a hauling system, making it easier to lift or pull. 
For most whitewater rescues, lightweight caving pulleys are fine. But if you're dealing with high loads or situations where failure isn't an option, 2-inch rescue pulleys are stronger and more reliable. Just be sure to use swing cheek pulleys, they're easier to clip onto the rope. Sounds like we'll have a well-rounded kit if we add some of these items. What about carabiners? Do we need any special ones? For rescue work, screw gate carabiners are essential. They're stronger and safer since they won't open accidentally. Just remember, if they're loaded sideways or with the gate open, their strength is drastically reduced, so always make sure they're properly oriented and locked. Got it. This has been super helpful, Sam. I feel a lot more prepared knowing what to bring and how to use it. I just hope we never actually need to use any of this gear. Me too, Liz. But it's always better to be prepared. Let's practice setting up some of these systems before we head out, just to make sure we're comfortable with everything. Absolutely. Let's plan a day for that. Thanks again for walking me through all of this.